Ladies and gentlemen, chess absolutely exploded over the last two years in 2020 and 2021. And so it's only fitting that now I'm making this video in 2022 to present a little bit of information on how to join chess tournaments. Obviously with the pandemic, most of us were playing chess online, but now a lot of us are moving to over the board play. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through everything that revolves around signing up for chess tournaments what they are, the format, how to find them, how to find them for adults and for kids, best rules, practices, etiquette. So I've broken up the video into three parts. I'm gonna try to just record this in one take. We're gonna see if I can succeed. Um, so let's just begin with what a chess tournament even is. A chess tournament is uh, a competition that you go to that can either be one day, all the games are played in one day, or it's like four days long, five days long, six days long. Uh, and whenever you play against another person, generally speaking, there is going to be, uh, besides the chess pieces, there is going to be a clock involved. So there's a timed element. The game could be 25 minutes per player, 50 minutes per player, could be 90 minutes per player, and then on the 40th move, you get extra time. Uh, so time control is another very important element uh, of the competition. Uh, the faster the time control and really if it's below a certain point, you don't even have to write, write the moves down, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, and that's basically what a chess tournament is. Okay. Now we have to start adding layers to that. Anybody could theoretically organize a chess tournament. If I wanted to call up a couple of my buddies and we sat down in this room and played a tournament, we could do that. However, to actually get a rating and be certified under some sort of set of unified rules somewhere, we have to add the element of rating and jurisdiction. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about specifically in the US Chess Federation, um, but you can apply this mostly to anywhere else. So once you have a rated element involved uh, and you wanna organize a US Chess Federation certified tournament, now the US Chess Federation is involved, of course, right? So you've gotta be a member of whatever jurisdiction that is. If you're abroad somewhere, uh, maybe you have a national rating system. Maybe you have the FIDE system. The FIDE system is the international governing body of chess. Uh, so they have their own rating system and their own jurisdiction. Um, but uh, I'm going to go full screen now to tell you a little bit about the, uh, the US Chess Federation in particular. So let's say you want to become a USCF member. It's something like $15 a year. I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't break the bank. Um, they have a website uschess.org. You become a member. Uh, you can become a member by just clicking join and becoming a member. So now what happens when you become a member? Um, I mean, they used to offer this thing where you get like print chess life, whatever you want. You know, they have kids chess life. I used to read those as a kid. Um, again, relatively cheap. Oh, it actually got, okay, slightly more expensive, but such as life. Yeah. Inflation and whatnot. Um, and, uh, yeah, once you become a member, you get an ID, you get an eight number ID. I know mine. And when you get that ID, uh, you can use that to go to ratings and then player lookup. And then, you know, like you, you can, you can search up other, other individuals, right? So this is like my member ID. Uh, it's not like a social security. You don't have to hide this. I mean, it's basically everywhere. Uh, and, uh, and here I am, right? And then with my disgustingly low rating, lowest in years. Um, so, so this is what you get. You get a member ID, you become a, a member of the US Chess Federation. But, okay, you did all that, fantastic. But how do you find chess tournaments? <laughs> like, uh, really, what, what do you do? Well, if you live in a big city, generally you're gonna have chess clubs that run either weekly events where there's like one game every weeknight or you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have difficulty finding games otherwise. So for example, what I did is I went to Google and I typed in Chicago Chess Tournaments. I apologize, by the way, if you're watching on dark mode. So you go to Chicago Chess Tournaments, right? And now I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to read this stuff. Um, so you go to open tournaments in the Illinois Chess Association. Most states will have something like this. It's going to be how they organize stuff. If they don't, it's going to be a little bit harder to find it. Uh, I would recommend going to uschess.org slash tournaments. And you can find that generally probably somewhere here, like upcoming tournaments. Uh, maybe plan ahead calendar. Grand Prix is, a, is, a, is for the higher level stuff. It's for the higher level events. There's a point system. This is where you would go. And like, let's say you want to find a tournament in the month of June uh, in the state of uh, Florida. Okay. There's going to be a lot of stuff. And maybe you don't want it, you know, you don't want it to be like here. All right. Apply. All right. It's going to pop up. Florida is a good state for chess. 
I did this for New Mexico because I was like hoping maybe there would be something in Albuquerque. Uh, whereas New Mexico, I think it literally showed me nothing. Yeah, it said no tournaments. So I'm just saying it also really matters where you live. It really does. You might have to spend a weekend driving somewhere. Florida has a lot of events. Uh, it's a little bit hard to figure out what's what. Like some of this stuff, you know, you might have to put in a city because Florida is huge. But for example, they have, you know, Tuesday night, quick rated, uh, game 20. So we're going to start figuring out what this means. Uh, we're going to start reading a little bit uh, of information here. Uh, well, let's go back to our Chicago one. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, here you have a tournament on, on June 18th. Most tournaments are on weekends. So this is a Saturday. Uh, and let's say you click it. All right, beautiful. Now you are about to learn how to read all this stuff. Okay. So 4SS or 7SS or 8SS means that's how many games you play. Chess is not an elimination format unless you're in the World Cup. Okay. You play no matter what. And the way that works is um, if you have... 12 players at the beginning of the tournament, okay? And then after the first round, six have one point, six have zero. All the one-pointers play each other. All the zero-pointers play each other. You only play people who have your score and rank by rating, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later, okay? First, we're talking about how to find the tournaments. So this means, game 60, means you get 60 minutes on the clock. And D5 means before you make a move, you get five seconds bonus, uh, uh, five seconds time bank. So before your clock starts running, okay, you get five seconds for the before, before that's just very standard. And you're gonna play four of these games where each of you get 60 minutes. Theoretically, the game could go two hours if, it, if you exceed the amount of time. Usually there's going to be an address. Usually there's going to be a registration period, but big tournaments you're allowed to, uh, Kind of go online and register your round times are 10 1 p.m 3 15 5 30 and i've never seen this before but illinois apparently tells you that there's going to be a lunch break ef means the entry fee payable in this case there's nowhere to register online so there's probably some sort of contact info and there's prizes okay so the prizes are based on 30 entries so they want 30 people to sign up it's 140 for first 80 dollars for second and this is like a section prize. So if you're the top performing player rated under 1200 or 1200 to 1599, they do this. Now this format is a bit clunky because they just kind of threw it all right there. Um, but for example, if you go to a big website, all right, like the Las Vegas National Chess Open, this just concluded and was actually the inspiration for this video, although I've been wanting to make it for a while, they do a great job breaking down information here. Um, that information that you saw there is great, but you're also going to have uh, tournaments where there's other sections. So for example, if you're rated like 1500, you can play in the under 17 or under 1500 sections. The open section generally has more rounds and also has extremely strong players. You could play in it theoretically, but you will probably lose all of your games and not have a good time. It's better for you to play here and the time control is here. They do a wonderful job of breaking up this information and this is really like the first place you should look for um, before you kind of go uh, and, uh, and look at this information. So we talked about time control and by the way, see, uh, here's 40, 90, 40, 90 means 40 moves to uh, 90 minutes. You get sudden death 30. Um, it might be slightly different for the beginner section. Right, see game 30 and five second increment. So that's immediately like now you know, that means 30 minutes per player, right? Here there's this, and then it's just a lot of information about the round times and um, they, they do like, they, they do a really good job. They do a really, really good job and that's why, that's why I kind of wanted to mention them. Here there's information about entry fees. The, the closer you pay to the tournament date, um, the more you're gonna pay. Um, and if you have a kid, you want your kid to play chess, it's very similar to this, except kids tournaments are actually broken up normally into ages as well. So in the open tournaments, not just the open section, but this is like an open tournament, anybody can play, uh, like male, female, doesn't matter. There's like, uh, they, they, you, I mean, some tournaments are, 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 are uh, women's only, but that we're not gonna open that Pandora's box of a debate right now, I'm just saying, uh, you know, however you identify in whatever age you are, you can play in the tournament. 
Um, and uh, like I said, you, you get paired against people based on how many points you have, not how old you are, not, you know, and, and, and kind of how the, the rating breaks up. That's basically it, really, that's, that's it. And uh, if you go to a big tournament, some hotels will sell out. You might have to register for a hotel. In this case, the Vegas Open is five days. So you, you, know, you, you might have to get a hotel, you might have to get a flight, right? That's, that's components that I leave in your capable hands. Um, and the process for children is the same, but children might have, like for example, youth events. Uh, I don't mean, I don't know, youth trophy tournament. I, let's just see what this is. What this is. Um, maybe they break this up by age. Uh, do they break? Yeah, yeah, for players like 14 and under, you know, for example, they might have K8, K10, K6, K3. You only play K people kindergarten to third grade because you don't want to pair an eighth grader with a second grader because that might be that might be terrifying, right? So kids tournaments have also the age element um, of uh, that 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 has to be restricted. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so uh, you show up to the tournament. Let's talk about rules. All right, let's talk about what what this is. You know when your round is, but you 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 know you you know all the you know all the basic stuff. You got to the hotel and everything. Um, let's uh, let's take a look. So this is kind of what these tournaments look like in a big setting, right? They have this massive thing over here, um, and then uh, like th this is kind of what it looks like. I mean, it might be on a little smaller scale, but everybody's sort of sitting next to each other playing. So you're gonna get your pairings, okay? And let's say it's round one, pairings means who you're playing. Uh, you're gonna see your name, you're gonna see who you're playing, and there's gonna be a board number. Now, in this case, for the beginner section, they made this very easy to read, uh, and you sort of, everybody plays everybody, but oftentimes, uh, the board will be over here, right, and, and the, the, the board number, and who's ever listed first plays white, who's ever listed second plays black. Uh, maybe they have, uh, maybe they, they, they have a slightly different format, I don't know. Uh, they, they, it looks like they just did it for al alphabetically. Uh, oh, okay, here's a pretty good example. See, round six, board 101. Who's ever playing with white, you see how many points they have, you see their rating. Maybe you will be missing some of this information, maybe not. So you go to your board, okay? You go to your board, um, and for this, I'm gonna demonstrate, I'm actually gonna grab the chess set back there. So you're gonna have a chess set. Now, normally in America, we have to bring our chess sets because because capitalism, I don't know. Because <laughs> chess organizers don't want to have the burden of owning a bunch of chess sets then losing money. In Europe, there's usually chess sets just provided. Um, so you bring a chess set. I would not recommend the wooden one. This one is very like nice. It's better to have at home. There's a lot of free chess sets, like vinyl chess sets, and then they have like uh, plastic pieces. So I, I would get them with the coordinates. Very easy to set up the board. Make sure the board is set up right. And you're going to have a chess clock. Um... I might have a chess clock in this office if you give me like 30 seconds. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna make any edits to this video, but I just dug around in my closet for like two minutes. Um, so this is a chess clock, all right? There's a lot of them. This one is the cheapest one. Uh, you will probably need someone to help you set this uh, because again, on the bottom, they have a million settings, but we don't make it easy in chess. So once somebody teaches you how to set this one time, just keep it in mind how to set it to 25 minutes, for example, that you'll have to do a little bit on your own. Um, but like, let's say you're going to a tournament with one time control and there's a, there, you know, there's a delay. You would go to setting number two. This one, you can set it to uh, 30 minutes. And uh, I don't know if it has bonus time or if it has delay, but you know, here is how you would set it. Um, and uh, I'm not actually sure this can even set to a delay. This might be such a new clock. There is no delay setting, but alas, this is what you do, all right? So you have the clock, you have the, you, ha you have this, and uh, the clock will stand uh, over here. If um, neither player, uh, I mean, if both players have their chess set, or if, you know, you can choose who sets up, black generally gets to choose, that's just the etiquette. Black can choose what clock to use, and black technically gets to choose which clock the side is on, if they're righty or lefty. If it's an official FIDE tournament, the clock has to be on black's right side. It's just how it works. Don't shoot the messenger. And this is it. I mean, this is like the chessboard. And then to start the game, you unpause the clock. The clock starts running. You make a move. You press the clock. You write your move down. Yes, there is a paper right here. You can bring your own scorebook or you can use what they have at the tournament. All right. Once you get that scorebook, 
You write down the moves. Your opponent makes a move, presses the clock. You write their move down. You start thinking, etc., etc. This continues, you know, onward for uh, how, however long the game lasts, anywhere between two and, I don't know, 100 moves. So um, you cannot change the clock setting after the game is started. It's just a rule, all right? Um, the reason you write moves down is so obviously you can database them and learn from them afterward, uh, but also in case there's any disputes, as long as you've been keeping a good like record with, uh, with the scorebook or, or the score sheet, then everything is kind of clean and organized there. Uh, for the organizing junkies, like it's, it's very rewarding to have a very clean scorebook with all information to kind of track your growth. Um, so you have to make moves and press the clock with the same hand. Okay, so again, back here, I, I didn't put all the pieces on because it's heavy. I would probably drop it. You make a move, press the clock, same hand. Okay, capturing is kind of the same thing. You, you, I mean, you can just sort of grab the piece and capture another one. Um, obviously, keep in mind that there are, there are certain rules that don't exist in online play. Like when you castle, you have to make sure you take the king and you move it before you castle. You, like, it goes first. You cannot do two hands at the same time. You cannot uh, touch the rook first. Um, the system will, uh, you know, will, will, will kind of uh, warn you if, you if you do something wrong online. But uh, yeah, here it's like you, you, you have to move the king. Um, and touch move. So you touch a piece. You have to move it. If there's no legal moves, there's some sort of penalty. If you're in check, you touch a piece and try to move it. You're still in check. You might have to block the check with that piece, like the queen, okay? So be very careful, all right? It's not like online chess. In online chess, you make an illegal move. Your king flashes in red. No one does that over the board. Touch move is touch move. If you can block a check with a legal move with the piece you touched, that's it, all right? And it's letting go. You make a move, you're like, oh, that's a bad move. You go back. You don't have to move there, but you have to move the piece you touched. Once you let go of a move, that's it. Okay, so a couple of different dynamics here on the board when it's in live play. But that's about it. You have the clock, okay? Any disputes, you're allowed to pause the clock. Don't pause the clock every move. Don't be one of those people. But you can pause the clock if your opponent is, I don't know, cheating or <laughs> being a nuisance. You can, you can kindly ask them to stop. There's really not a whole lot of talking, um, but we'll talk about that in the etiquette portion. And that's basically it. Um, sometimes they put kings in the center of the board when the game is over. You see that on, on, on live video. That's only for uh, professional and like DGT boards. Your board is going to be made of like plastic or vinyl. You, you cannot, that doesn't really do anything. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's like, those are the rules of the live game, right? Uh, when you get below five minutes, you can stop notating. That's another rule. Um, so that's, I mean, that's really it. Like there's a little system. You got to write moves down. If you don't, it's going to be difficult for you to claim anything to an arbiter. It's going to be difficult for you to analyze your own games. So you come, you sit down, um, deliver, like you, when it's check, you don't have to say it out loud. Um, but you can, if it's checkmate, you don't have to say it out loud. You can kind of shake hands, say good game. Uh, you're going to forget to press the clock all the time. So remind your opponent or they'll remind you. Doesn't matter what age they are, try to like be courteous. Um, that's about it. I mean, I kind of told you uh, the, the basics. Um, you know, all the pieces move the same like they do online, but you're, you're responsible completely for the rule book. Online, it warns you. It says, or it like reminds you you're in check. No, no, you got to know about touch move. You got to be 100% certain you're making the legal moves. Uh, don't try to fool anybody. Like if you make a mistake and if your opponent sometimes like violates the rule, like literally touches a piece, moves it back and says, I didn't touch it. Sometimes you get screwed. It happens because you literally sit there and go, it happens with kids a lot because kids are like, I didn't touch it. And you're like, I literally saw you. And if there's no one around, nothing happens because think about it. If, if it could have been the reverse, they could claim you touched the piece and you didn't touch anything. And the arbiter can't rule that in your favor. So as long as there's no witness, it's kind of, you know, it's the brutal thing about chess, but it happens. Um, so yeah, I think now we can probably transition to etiquette. 
uh, live at the board. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I wrote down a lot of different things. So for me personally, um, talking before, after, during the game. So prior to games beginning, most likely if you're se seated with another adult, uh, if you're seated, uh, your kid is playing another kid at a scholastic tournament, there will be some chatter before the game. Kids will be like, where do you go to school? Blah, blah, blah. That's normally okay as long as it's within reason. Uh, sometimes parents are lunatics at kids' tournaments. They start like trying to intimidate the opponent's kid. Like, my son does 100 tactics every day. And you're like, well, your son's a loser. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, so, th th like, you're gonna, it's, gonna, it's a fine line you have to tread. Sometimes it's very pleasant small talk before the game. Sometimes it's like weird. When you go to a tournament, you might, you might say, hey, when did you get into chess? Because your opponent's an adult. Uh, keep it within reason, you know, the, the game goes on, you really shouldn't talk to each other during the game, there's no reason to do that, you might go to the bathroom, come back and say, where'd you move? I, I can't see where you moved. They, are, they can tell you, but they don't have to tell you. It's your responsibility. You can go to the bathroom, you can get up during the game, uh, ideally not when it's your move. If you get up while your clock is running, they're just gonna think you're cheating, they're gonna think you're going somewhere to, uh, to cheat. Speaking of cheating, Turn off your cell phone. You can even put it face down on the board next to you. That's what we started doing in the open section to get rid of any cheating concerns. Um, uh, what else? Uh, food and drink. Oh, sorry. No, talking after the game. Totally respectable. Um, like, if you want to analyze the game with your opponent or you want to have a quick chat, generally do it outside of the playing hall. You can, you can say something like you want to go over the game outside. You want to talk about the game outside. Don't do it at the board. You're probably going to distract other people. It's very quiet in the playing room. Um, so yeah, talking, you know, up to you. I'm a New Yorker, I don't do small talk very well. And at, at, at my level, no one small talks before the games. We've, we've been through it, right? If I was like 1200 and I was an adult like learner and I just got into chess, I might wanna small talk my opponent before the game. Absolutely fine, you know, within reason. Um, but kinda keep it to a minimum during the game. There's really no, it's a silent, it's the beauty of chess. It's kind of a silent conversation. Um, cell phones, yeah, turn them off. Uh, and uh, if you wanna, if you wanna offer a draw during a game, you should do it after you make a move. So you play a move, you offer a draw, you press the clock. If you offer a draw and you haven't moved, your opponent will say, and you should say, make a move first, make a move. And your draw offer is legal until your opponent makes a move in response or declines the draw verbally. So you might shoot yourself in the foot a little bit because you might be winning. And now they said, we'll make a move first. And they're like, oh God, I got to make a move. And my draw offer is still valid. So you want to be 100% certain before you make a draw. I would just say, don't even offer a draw, just play, right? So the draw offer uh, thing exists. Don't offer a draw every move. If you offered a draw once in a game and it was declined, you probably should not offer it again for a very long time. I don't exactly know the rules, but you cannot harass your opponent every move. Kids do that. Kids get very mad, upset. They start offering a ton of draws. You can tell them to stop. You can call an arbiter. Uh, kids are tend to be more annoying than adults over the board because they're kids. They're restless. They slam clocks. They, you know, God knows what. Um, so tolerate kids a little bit, but if it gets ridiculous, you can obviously have somebody intervene. Uh, you're going to be playing a lot of kids if you're an adult trying to play a beginner's chess tournament. Um, it absolutely happens. Um, and I mean, there, there's, I kind of, I kind of covered sort of every, a little bit of everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, it just general best practices. Like if you're playing four games in one day, they're all 25 minutes long. They're all 60 minutes long. You're going to be exhausted. So general best practices, you are going to be absolutely exhausted emotionally, physically at a chess tournament. Um, your, your nerves are gonna be bouncing all over the place. There's really no feeling quite like playing a live game. So go in with no expectations, go in maybe even anticipating to underperform because uh, if you do, you'll be like, oh, at least I prepared myself mentally. And if you overperform, you'll feel great really, really try to write your moves down. Practice that at home before you go. Uh, you can do it while playing a 30 minute game online, a 15 minute game online. Get really good at notation because you really want to save these games. You're probably taking it for granted. All the games you play on Chesscom, Lee Chess, like they auto save. So this is a great opportunity to learn from games live. And if you mess up your notation, it's devastating. Now, 
One more thing. See, I'm just adding things as we go. Notation, you can ask your opponent in the middle of the game. Hey, I messed up my notation. Can I see yours? Like, could you? They don't have to. But they, you know, they can. And only do that on your move. You only interrupt the flow of the game when your clock is ticking. Never on your opponent's turn. Extremely disrespectful to do that. Um, food and beverage, by the way. Sorry, I was going to mention that at some point. Again, I'm just sort of spitballing here. Uh, food and beverage. Beverage tends to be okay, as long as it's kind of quiet. Uh, you want to eat a bar, you want to eat some almonds at the board. I like to open it away from the board because it makes noise. I don't open it at the board, and I almost never eat at the board. Uh, don't bring a full meal to the board. Don't eat Subway. Don't eat, like, don't do that. Garbage. Stop. That's like terrible behavior. Don't do that at all. Don't eat live in front of your opponent. Don't spill food on the table. At that point, I'll allow your opponent to slap you upside the head. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a little bit about food and beverage, uh, I would say, you know, just general, generally respect the board. Don't, don't get anything on the board. Uh, keep the area kind of nice and clean. Uh, you're going to experience all sorts of people in over the board chess. You're going to experience nitpicky old people who are unhappy about the tablecloth of the hotel. They constantly adjusting it, fixing it, you know, very, very picky people who, uh, must play with the chess set that they brought or else they have a meltdown. You're gonna deal with kids. You know, you're gonna deal with completely normal people. Shockingly normal people. So normal, you don't even think to see them at a chess tournament, right? That's the beauty of the game. Uh, or not. I don't know how you wanna see it, but uh, be prepared for all things uh, when you go for a chess tournament. Uh, you will be exhausted. Uh, I would say don't eat anything that would spike your blood sugar, but that's really difficult to do. A lot of tournaments are held God knows where. The only place they eat is a McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like, you might have to bring some fruit, bring some healthy snacks with you. Uh, especially if you're, like, with your kid. I mean, it, it can be really, really difficult at some of these tournaments to find good food. Um, but be prepared. I mean, be prepared for a marathon. And uh, obviously, if you're playing a tournament with multiple days in it, you pre prepare as if, as if you know, you, you would prepare, like, any time you go traveling. Um, that's basically it. Honestly, I, I can't think of anything else. Uh, once the tournament is over, you go right back to the U.S. chess page. Most tournaments will rate their uh, event uh, quite quickly. So you can go, you can search yourself up, and um, there's going to be, you know, a list of your uh, tournaments. And these are, this is how your rating changed, okay? So it's going to be, you know, how your rating has changed over time. I have played... 340 tournaments in my life, right? And then some people have played zero. Some people have played a thousand. And this is uh, information about, about your tournament page. And I feel like we've covered everything in this video. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the comments. Hopefully, experienced players will, will answer them. I've sort of talked as much as I, as I could about um, etiquette and that kind of stuff. Um, I talked about draw offers. Uh, resigning the game, you're more than welcome to resign. You can stop the clock or just extend your hand. You don't have to do no Queen's Gambit cinematography where you knock over your king. Extending the hand and quietly saying, I resign. Pausing the clock and saying, I resign. That's how I resign. I, and I do that a lot. So I pause the clock, you know, I'll, I'll extend my hand or whatever uh, silently. Um, your opponent might go, are you resigning? Because they're five or they're, they've never played a tournament before. Uh, and that's, uh, that's about it. So... Yeah, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to keep it relatively short and sweet. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. I, I don't think I need to make a sequel, um, but, uh, but I hope this helped, and I hope uh, you, your children, your loved ones, your, your friends, your family, your dogs, your cats, uh, all find a chess tournament that you're looking for uh, and, uh, and have a good time. Ah, actually, I remembered one last thing that I wanted to say. Some chess clubs are pretentious, and they will only let you in and make you feel welcome if you are uh, male or if you are uh, if you're strong. This is how chess always was. It was a male-dominated game, and it was for strong players, like 1700, 1800. And one of my I, I knew a guy from a small town in Sweden once who was afraid of going to his local chess club because he was concerned about that. It might be a thing. You might feel unwelcome. I don't know. In the states. It's not really a thing anymore because here a lot of kids play chess now. So that barrier to entry is gone. There's a lot of young boys and girls who are like total beginners at chess clubs. And you know why? Capitalism, baby. We know it's money, right? We, we here in the States, we don't, we don't discriminate based on your skill level anymore. There's no level of pretentiousness for chess clubs. We just, we know that if your son or daughter wants to play chess, uh, they are going to, uh, you know, they're going to be paying a membership fee, for example. 
So that is a barrier to entry in some chess clubs around the world. It is. And I was going to say that earlier in the video, uh, but I decided to say it now. If you had the attention span to stick around for 30 minutes, thank you very much. Um, so do your best. Enjoy. It's very different than playing in online, than, uh, in online stuff, but uh, it could be very rewarding as well. I'll see you in the next video. Get involved in the comments. Peace out. Get out of here.